Inside Science. Hello, my name is Ali Jennings, and here is a quick roundup of what's been going on in the world of science this month. First on the agenda, artificial intelligence, the bad guy in good sci-fi whose weakness is bad Wi-Fi. Now, many algorithms that AI uses at the moment are very good at making associations between things, but bad at explaining the reasons behind those associations. I mean, this is fine if you're only interested in identifying that random guy in your Facebook pictures, but it's less fine if you want to know the reasons that caused him to be there in the first place. Well, this kind of causal reasoning is at the heart of natural science, observing data about the world and working out the underlying processes that produce that data. But when we start examining complex phenomena like weather formation or cell biology, finding the underlying causes for the data that we see is hard. <laughs> So, a group of researchers spread across Europe decided to do something about it. And this month, they presented an AI that instead of just searching for matching patterns in a scene, looks for an underlying algorithm to explain what might most likely have caused them. Now, this kind of algorithmic generation is different to the networks that we hear about more often, which do deep learning. In deep learning networks, networks are given an end goal and told to try, fail and fail better using feedback to improve the network slightly each time. And in this way, those kind of networks can learn lots of different behaviours. For example, another study this month used these kind of networks to help train this four-legged robot creepy dog thing to work out for itself how to get up after being knocked down. Please don't make him angry. We will be their servants one day, but not today. In fact, the glorious robot revolution, comrades, may take a while. Earlier this month, the Henna Hotel in Japan, famously staffed by the machines, has had to fire its robo room service because it's rubbish. The porters can't reach most of the rooms, the bots keep breaking down, and the AI can't tell if you're speaking to it or snoring at it. So for now, our squishy cellular brains are the best general intelligence going. And this month, a new paper described a way of seeing their tangled, messy beauty in mind-boggling detail. The technique works by building microscopic scaffolding throughout the treated tissue, which expands when it's bathed in water like one of these plastic toys. Except, unlike these, uh, this actually has a point. It keeps everything in roughly the same position, but blows up. The detail. So January was a fine month for research, unless of course you were working for the US government. As we recorded this, the US government shutdown was being brought to an end at last, at least for three weeks. But there have been casualties. It turns out that you need government workers to service government aircraft, like the ones that NASA have been using to measure Arctic and Antarctic ice loss over the last decade. Now this was supposed to be a seamless record of how ice has been changing at the poles, but this season's recordings have already lost half of their mission time to aircraft maintenance. You also need federal workers to keep national parks open, apparently. And with the Isle Royal National Park shut, more researchers have lost much of the time that they needed to study the wolves there and the moose that they prey on. And that work has been going on since the 60s, and now it might have a big hole in it. It seems strange to have to say this, but maybe it bears repeating. Uh, it's important to learn things about the world, because when we've learned enough, we can change things. And in the world of science this month, this happened in a big way. Researchers took one of the most fundamental processes of life, and they fixed it. Plants use the energy from sunlight to turn carbon dioxide in the air into useful carbon-based molecules in their cells. Now, this is photosynthesis. The mechanism is no perfect. 20% of the time, the enzyme which attaches carbon dioxide from the air to larger carbon skeletons in the plant attaches an oxygen instead. And this triggers a long and wasteful process to get rid of the resulting toxic chemicals. This month, researchers published work showing that they could stop this happening by adding various genes from bacteria and algae to tobacco plants, as well as silencing an unhelpful transporter gene. Now, this improved the plant's growth by up to 40%. And 
and the funders of the research are committed to giving free access to this technology to smallholder farms across the world. Now that is a feel-good story. And who knows? And we might need technology like this as we venture further away from our verdant home. The Chinese Space Agency have already started. They managed to land a spacecraft this month on the dark side of the moon and on board that craft were a number of seeds, some of which sprouted the first extraterrestrial crops. Of course, they all died almost immediately as the moon went into shadow and the temperature dropped to minus 170 degrees Celsius. But this is still a huge achievement. Growing plants in space is no joke. And you can read more about that in this article on the Inside Science website. But that's it from me for this month. I've been Ali Jennings. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next month. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.